Hello everybody. I'm very excited and only a little bit terrified to see all currently 53 of you on the call. So welcome everybody to our training session today, which is really brilliant. I'm so pleased to see you all. Um, the session today is on our online catalogue, um, Apexio. Um, just a few housekeeping bits and pieces. You'll probably have already seen or heard that we're going to be recording the session. So if you don't want to be included in the recording, please turn off your microphone and video um, now. Um, we're going to make the recording available afterwards. I think you should perhaps all get an email including a link to it, but it'll certainly be on our YouTube channel uh, shortly after the session. Um, so if you do want to catch up with any of the bits of it, then you'll be able to do that. Um, most of the session is pre-recorded. We didn't quite trust the internet connection to just do it all live. So there's a chunk of the session that is pre-recorded. So that's about 50 minutes. Um, and what we're going to do afterwards is have a chance for questions. It would be really helpful if you've got any questions, if you could pop them in the chat, because there are so many of us, I think it'd just be a bit easier to try and manage it that way. Um, if you think of any questions as you go along, if I can, I'll, I'll try and answer them in the chat as we go. Um, otherwise, we'll have a roundup at the end and um, I'll try and cover as many as I can at that point. If um, If we'd run out of time and I haven't answered your question, it would be really helpful if you could email in email it in to us at archives at gloucestershire.gov.uk. Um, it's really going to be so useful to get your feedback. One of the things we want to do is try and put together a set of answers to some frequently asked questions. So if I don't manage to cover your question, please email it in afterwards and um, we'll try and get back to you then. I think that's all for the time being. Um, We've just got a couple more people who are just coming in now. So what I'll do is I'll press the play button and we'll start the recording and then I'll see you all in about 50 minutes very soon. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to Gloucestershire Archives at the Gloucestershire Heritage Hub. My name's Claire and I'm the Collections Development Manager here. I wanted to talk today a little bit about our new online catalogue, Apexio. The session really is aimed at anyone who wants to use the catalogue and first of all, I thought I'd give you a bit of background about cataloguing and the collections development here at Gloucestershire to help you get the best out of your searching. So I'll start with a bit of history. The office was founded in 1936, uh, called then Gloucestershire Record Office. And at that time, we were obviously documenting collections manually, um, creating paper lists and paper indexes. This situation continued until about 2000, when our cataloguing first cat archive management system really was introduced and cataloguing was computerized. And by 2001, we'd published our first online catalog. Around about a similar time, we were improving other finding aids with the help of some amazing volunteers. If you look on our website, you'll find references to our genealogical database and our tithe apportionment database, both of which are still used today. In 2005, we took on responsibility for local studies in the county and Gloucester Local Studies Centre co-located with us on the Alvin Street site. We became then Gloucestershire Archives. More recently, we've been involved in an externally heritage lottery funded project called For the Record, which has led to the development of some um, improved customer facilities on site, some improved storage facilities or new storage facilities for our documents, as well as the development of our new online catalogue. We've calculated that the data held in our cataloguing software is worth approximately nine million pounds. It's been created over 85 years, so all of the resource that's gone into looking after the collections since then has helped us calculate this sum. The catalogue needs to be maintained permanently or as long as we hold the archives so that we can make sure we have intellectual control over the collections. And we obviously want to provide publicly accessible information about our holdings to anyone wherever they are. Up until now, we'd worked with the same commercial supplier for 20 years. And we know that the online catalogue is the one thing we get the most negative feedback about. And we were keen to improve this for our customers. So we undertook a procurement process 
and this led to us launching the new system, Apexio, in June 2021. So, 85 years is a really long time, and over that time, cataloguing practice has changed. But there are also some things which are remarkably familiar and similar. And it can be very helpful, I think, to understand the archival context of the data about the collections, which can be very different from a library context. And I think knowing that background can help you get the best out of the catalogue searches that you might make. So, what is an archive? There is no single agreed definition, and you'll find the word used in various different ways. Um, some people think of an archive as a dumping ground of old stuff. Um, in an IT context, uh, it's very often used in a backup sense, so a backup of a set of emails or a backup of your digital files is called an archive. And it can also refer to a building or a repository. We are Gloucestershire Archives. Um, and I suppose you could think of us as an artificial collection of research and heritage material. But there is rather a good definition from the TNA, which is quite long, but it does encapsulate all the things that need to be said about what we think an archive is. And what the TNA have said is that an archive is materials created or received by a person, family or organisation, public or private, in the conduct of their affairs and preserved because of the enduring value contained in them or as evidence of the functions and responsibilities of their creator. And that's a really useful thing just to bear in mind when you're thinking about the searches you might want to make, because that will help you narrow down and pinpoint exactly the information that you might want to find. So there are some key features of an archive. How do you know when you've got one? Um, usually they start life as working records. So they're not created to be archives, they're created because somebody is doing something else, um, like the census material, the government is counting the population. They don't have to be particularly old, and they don't have to be created before a particular date. Um, all that really needs to be true is that they're no longer needed for current business purposes. So with my census example, obviously the population counted in 1901, doesn't have much bearing on government policy today. Our holdings, in fact, date from about the mid 12th century until 2021. So we've got some wonderful uh, cartularies from Winchcombe Abbey in the mid 12th century um, to some very recent digital deposits that the County Council have made. They don't have to be in a particular format. Um, they can be analog, microfilm, photograph, parchment, digital, um, but usually they are primary or original source material, and they very often have evidential value. So for the County Council, the main or master set of minutes, the signed copy of minutes that records the business of the Council is kept by us in the archive. And that is the evidence that the Council can rely on of, bit, of decisions that have been made and actions that they've undertaken. And very often they're unique and irreplaceable. There's only one signed copy of the County Council minutes. So there are a few key concepts that, that perhaps really help or that flow really from the particular nature of archives, as we've just been discussing. And those things, I think, help to explain why we approach um, things in the way that we do. So one of the things we're very, very interested always is the provenance or the backstory. We want to know how or why archive collections came into being. Who created them? Why did they create them? How were they used? Um, what changes of ownership happened? Uh, what changes in physical locations happened? What's the story of the collection? We're also generally interested in the relationship between items within a collection. Um, and we're very keen on preserving the original order of the collection. So the original way, as far as we can tell, that the records were used and stored. And this really is a quite a big contrast with library books, which tend to be single standalone items. We also 
I suppose, think about um, archives as collections, uh, uh, collections as, as families, um, so that some, all of the documents from the same source are like a family, and all of the individual material within that collection tells you something by itself, but it probably also tells you a lot more within the context of the collection and the relationship of one item to another can help explain all kinds of things. And so really we're very sure that we want to maintain the archival integrity of our collections. We don't tend to split things up unless there's a very good reason. And we can find it quite frustrating that um, single items are auctioned um, perhaps in, on eBay or, or by auction houses um, where perhaps the reason that they're being auctioned is that there's a signed a, a signature of a, of a famous person. So a famous letter, a famous letter writer has, has written a letter and, and signed it. It's like Jane Austen. Um, and so that's valuable. People want to buy that. But we think it's valuable in context of all the other correspondence that Jane Austen has, has written. So we would want really to keep all of that material together because the collection itself tells you more than just the single letter. So what then do we think cataloguing is? Really, it's just the word that we use for organising and describing our collection or collections. And there's quite a nice little joke here. Um, we've had complaints about your cataloguing system, Miss Preble. And you can see that there's a stereotypical librarian perhaps there with um, several shelving units behind her, each one of which is captioned. Um, so they've obviously been um, organised by author, but one bookshelf is captioned sexist authors, another is far too rich authors, another is smoking authors, another is authors I disagree with. And you can see that this probably isn't a particularly sensible way to organise your library material. So with archival cataloguing, there's some particular things that it's really useful to bear in mind. We aim to describe collections and the items within them. So what you'll find in our catalogue is multiple descriptions talking about the same thing. We like to um, respect the provenance of the item um, and the idea that in a, in a collection, each, each item is like a piece of a jigsaw. It, it tells you a certain amount in itself, but altogether you get a much better picture of the whole. Um, we usually like to place each item in the collection in relation to the other items in the collection. So that refers back just to the point I made earlier, where you'll find multiple descriptions of the same thing within the catalogue. Um, but the way that we differentiate these is by doing them at different levels. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And we call this the archival hierarchy. What we tend to do is use keywords or index terms to highlight topics across collections. So we don't generally tend to catalogue collections under, under topics. Um, and we don't really use um, preset schemes or classifications. So we don't really use the Dewey Decimal Scheme, for example, for, live, um, for archive material because it doesn't, it's not really appropriate. So I just I mentioned a little a minute ago um, archival hierarchy, and that comes down to the arrangement of the material or how we organise it within the collection. So we tend to keep documents within the same collection together. So things that have come from a single source we keep together. Um, we keep runs of related documents together. So um, things that are similar, like minute books, we would tend to keep all the minute books in a set or a series together. Um, so we have the minutes of Gloucestershire County Council. We've got the main council minutes as well as the minutes of various subcommittees. Our main council minutes are kept in one series and we tend then to list them by date. So we start at the earliest council minute and carry on until we get to the latest council minute. And so that arrangement reflects the chronological way in which the documents have been created and are used. So I just thought it might be helpful to 
um, show you this diagram um, of an archival hierarchy or a catalogue tree, you might like to think about it. Um, and this is the catalogue tree for um, Upton St Leonard's Parish Records, which we've given a reference number to, which we call P347. And then the material within that collection, we've split up into different sections. So we've got a section for church wardens records and a section for the records of the incumbent. And then as always, a miscellaneous section for all those things that perhaps don't quite fit into anywhere else. Um, and then underneath the miscellaneous section, we've got a series of records um, called parish newsletters. And then we've kept those in chronological order. So we started with the earliest parish magazine um, or newsletter and all the way up to the last parish magazine or newsletter. And if you just bear that one in mind, um, if you watch our next recording about um, searching the catalogue, I'll try and show you what that looks like in the online catalogue context. And then finally, there's sort of key information that we record at each level, uh, which can make it a little bit muddly sometimes working out where you are in the catalogue. So if the same thing is described in more than once, spotting the level is the thing that's going to help you understand what it is that you're looking at. So usually, um, Every catalogue record or entry in the catalogue um, contains a summary description. It'll contain a date or a date range. Um, so you might have um, a parish magazine for Upton St. Leonard's, um, 1964. There'll usually be some indication of quantity and format. So uh, we might say one volume for our parish magazine example. And it'll always have a unique reference code. So what was it? P347 MI1 stroke one will be the first parish magazine in that collection. And then lastly, we will always indicate the level so that you can tell whether what you're looking at is a single item or is actually a broader description at series level. So a set of parish magazines or a set of minutes or even a broader description. It's miscellaneous section of material that hasn't fitted anywhere else. Or you can tell if you're actually looking at the collection description for the whole of Upton St Leonard Parish records. So you can find the catalogue from um, a li any link from our Gloucestershire Archives website or from our Gloucestershire Heritage Hub website. And I think if you Google it, it should also pop up. And you'll come to this home page here. Um, on the top left, you get a little breadcrumb trail which tells you where you are in the site, which helps you to keep your place and on the top right hand side there are these four options home search browse and help those will appear on every page that you navigate to so you can always find the help and you can always go home now you can see there are a few things on this page there's a simple google style search box and there are some search options which i'll talk about in a bit you can browse our collections you can also browse our thematic research guides and you can access our indexes. And again, I'll talk about all three of those just shortly. So first things first, what is in the catalogue? So Apexio contains details of almost all the material held at Gloucestershire Archives, which is mainly unique and original documents. Uh, the catalogue contains a brief overview of all the collections in general, along with an item by item description of those collections which have been fully catalogued. And we estimate that that's about 70% of our holdings. It also holds references for books and pamphlets held at Gloucestershire Archives and for printed local studies type material held at Cheltenham Local and Family History Centre. You can also access our thematic research guides, which gives you some additional information about the types of records held, held here. Um, so for example, I'm gonna have a look at the apprenticeship records and it's just a downloadable guide to the types of records here.
you can also access the indexes, uh, which are name indexes to various sets of records that have been created over the years. For example, this index to the register of rural constabulary, which is an index to a specific document, in fact, um, all of which are searchable through the database. So that's just an example of what there is. Now I'm going to make a simple search to show you what the next page looks like. And again, as I said, it's a simple Google style text box and I, you can enter any text and I'm going to search for Christmas. And then it brings you back these hits. So you have here your breadcrumb trail. So you know you've been in the archive catalogue, you know you've made a search and this is the results page. You can see here the four um, static links at the top, home, search, browse and help. And now you've got this additional information here. So it tells you what it was you searched for, which is really helpful. It gives you the results per page. So I've set this to 100, but you can actually change that to 20 or 50 depending on your preference. And you can change the order. So the order, uh, first of all, comes up by relevance, and that is calculated by the system, or you know, much like Google is by an algorithm. So it, it brings you back the hits in the order in which it thinks you might want to see them. But if you wanted to change that, you could change it to date or to title. Or to reference number and there it is it's, you can see it's changed changed that there i'm going to put it back actually to relevance just for the time being you can then have you can then you make use of these options you can print your results or you can email the results to yourself although it will only send you the first thousand entries um, so you can just enter your email address there, check the I'm not a robot box and send and that will plop into your mailbox. So then what have you got here? The search is an intelligent search. So there are a couple of things to say about the search. The search is an intelligent search and it searches across the whole of the archive catalogue. And what I mean by that is that within an archive catalogue, what you'll find actually is multiple descriptions talking about the same thing. So you might find some things described in great detail at an item level, but you'll also find series of things described. So you'll find a minute book described, one minute book, 1810 to 1815, but you'll also find a series description covering a set of minute books from 1810 to maybe 1890, of which the minute book is one within that series. You might also find section records where the minute book has been created by a particular committee. And then all of that is within the context of a specific collection. So it might be the Gloucestershire County Council collection. The section might be council business. The series might be full committee minutes and the individual record will be the first minute book. Okay, but the search searches intelligently across all of those descriptions to help bring back the thing that you're looking for, because it may be the case that the particular search term you're using is not present in the catalogue record for the item that you want to see. So the search searches across all of that hierarchy and brings you back things that it thinks are relevant to you. It also searches across the entire contents of the database. So if you see here, it's split it up into archive records and local studies type records. And you can see, well, I'll show you the, the difference. So here we've got the archive records. And if you just see at the top left hand corner here, there's a little icon that helps locate you in the collection. So this tells you this is a collection level description. 
and so is this one. But this one down here is an item level description. So the collection is a box and the item is a single sheet of paper. And that's to help you navigate through the system and to work out what kind of catalogue record it is that you're looking at. So if we go to the local studies, that's not quite the same. So you'll see the little icon here is a book and then there are just individual entries, which are all the same that match your search term. We've also got some index entries in here that match our search term. And you can see on this tab that it tells you the search term, gives you a bit of information here. And then at the bottom, it's really handy. It just tells you where it is that that index card has come from. And again, the icon here helps to locate you so that you know that that's an index. It's not an archive item or an archive catalogue or a collection. It's not a local studies item. It's an index entry. Um, we haven't got any hits in our names or places um, um, tabs, but we have got some subjects. And again, the icon here is just to help you try and navigate through. So it's not an index entry. It's not a file or a box. It's, um, it's a subject. So that's that little box there. OK, so I'm going to go back to the archive records here. Um, now, it tells you that it's displaying 1 to 20 of 1,480 that are in the um, archive records. And I've shown you can display more or less. And then you can navigate through that list. Um, you can go next and previous, and then you can jump through to the pages as you like. And then you get your list here of hits as returned. So you can see where or what type of thing it is that you're looking for. So this one's an item. This tells you the hierarchy um, so that this belongs to the high school for girls school collection. Um, it's in a sectional series that's called school publications. And then it's a particular item, which is a Christmas card. And your search term is highlighted in red, which is quite handy. You can see why it brings back the search a result for the search that you've made. And then on the top right hand corner, again, there is the reference number of the item. Okay. And then on the left, there are some um, filters that you can apply to your set of results, which is quite helpful. So you might um, you might think that 1480 records is far too big and actually you can narrow that down by date range and you know that you're looking for something in the 19th century so i'm going to narrow that oh narrow that down i'm going to go 1800 to 1899 and i'm going to apply that filter and that's actually brought it down to a much more manageable level there are 191 hits and i could just look through all of those you could also apply some filters by collection. So on the left hand side, again, you can see all the sorts of different collections that make up your results. And actually, you happen to know that you wanted to see what the Petty Sessions have to say about Christmas. So you're going to just select that box. And that's narrowed that down again to 32 records. Um, and mostly these are settlement examinations, which you can see there. I'm going to uncheck both of those filters. And then there are some other filters that you can apply. Um, so if you happen to know that you're just doing some really broad research, you might want to filter your results by collection because you just want to get a broad overview of what or broad feeling for what you're looking for. So if you apply that filter, that just brings back all of these collection level type records. And then conversely, if you know you actually only want to see the things that you want to be able to order up in the search room, you can apply this item level filter. And then that just brings back all of the things that you can actually order up 
in the search room or would be able to see. Okay, and finally, just this location of records, I'll just talk a little bit about that. In our catalogue, there are just a few records that relate to um, Gloucester Cathedral Dean of Chapter Archive, which are held at the cathedral. So now and again, you might find that the records are not held with us and you can filter on that. So you can choose only to look at the things that are at Gloucestershire Archives. And as you can see there, you can apply more than one filter at a time. And I'm just going to put that date back again. So there we are, I've got those three filters all applied there. Okay. So if you happen to know that you are particularly interested in this Dursley Tabernacle Congregational Church Christmas Gift Fund account, you can click on that to see more details. And this gives you a full description of the item. So across the top here, you have your breadcrumb trail again. On the top right, you have um, the options to help you navigate back around within the website. It reminds you which search you've just made. And then it tells you the records hierarchy. So where this item has come from. And this item has come from Dursley Tabernacle Congregational Church and its charities section. And this particular thing is the Christmas gift fund accounts, 1891 to 1911. And then there's a little bit of a description here that at the end, there's some notes of the collections, um, which includes the names of recipients and the amounts, tells you how to find the item, you need the finding reference. Um, it remembers that it's held here. It tells you how much it is, so it's a single volume. It tells you what level it is, it's an item, and it confirms that it's orderable, so you can access this in the research room. I'm just going to, one of the nice things about this website or the fact that you can access the catalog through a browser is that you can make use of the browser functionality. So I'm just gonna right click and open that record in a new tab. And you can see that here. So I've got the page that I was on or the, the, the level that I was on, the Christmas gift fund accounts. And then in a new tab, it's opened a link to the congregational church and I can find out much more about the church on this at this level. Um, so it tells you again, it tells you the title of the collection and the date gives you a full or fuller description of the contents of the entire collection. It tells about any access conditions that you might need to know about. So this particular one, um, just the little asterisk tells you that this collection contains some uncatalogued records and really we would prefer you to give us a week's notice of your visit to help us make sure that we are able to get it out in time for you. Tells you a bit about the custodial history so that, that it was the Tabernacle United Reformed Church deposited material at these dates. Um, it's held here at Gloucestershire Archives. Sometimes it might tell you whether there's any related material. So this is quite helpful if you're interested in the history of a church. You can see this um, um, publication that's held in our collections. If you have a look for that um, reference number, you should come across it. Um, it confirms that it's at a collection level and then there are any notes. So it tells you that the particular one of the accessions, 8387, isn't catalogued. So I'm just going to put that back to the full screen. And then as you go down, you can see that this tells you a little bit more about the hierarchy or the structure of the catalog. So you might be particularly interested in the Christmas search, but also then want to find out a bit more about the um, Dursley Tabernacle. And then you can have a click through the tree here so each cross will open 
another set of um, descriptions. And again, the little icons help to locate you within the hierarchy. So this is a single item. And then you might just be particularly interested in charities. Oh, there's our Christmas gift fund accounts or the societies. So the Sunday school, you can find out the, the records relating to the Sunday school. And then you can use this tab here to click through to the details. And then we've kind of come around full circle to an item. So then there are a number of actions that you can do, which are in this little box on the right. So you can get in touch with us about this particular record. And if you do that, it sets up an email or a form which ends up as an email with us, which includes the details of the record you've just been looking at. So you can put in your title, your name, your email. And then in message. And then it's linked this one to the bottom. And then you can just send that. I'm not going to send that because that will end up as a query in our um, database and nobody needs to answer it. So I shall just cancel that one. You can also print the catalog entry. So just like you can print out the set of results and you can also email the catalog entry to yourself like we did before. The other thing that you can do at this point is you can add that item to your saved records. Um, so I'm just gonna do that now, but I'm gonna talk a bit more about saved records and what you can do later. So you can see up here that this now, I, that's a little toggle. So actually, if I decide I didn't want to save after all, I made a mistake, I can just remove it. But that will remain there as naught. I'm going to add it back. And you can see it tells you how many saved records you've got there, which is one. So I'm just going to close down some of these tabs now. And I'm going to add that one to my saved records too, just to refresh the page. And then I'm going to go back to the archive catalog search. Okie dokie. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the kinds of searches that you can make. Um, so I searched for Christmas there, but actually I can make a bit more of a sophisticated search because actually I'm not just interested in Christmas, I'm really interested in Christmas carols. So I'm gonna search for Christmas carol and I can make use of the wildcard um, key, which is an asterisk in this instance. So when I make that search, that's going to search for carol and carols and caroling and any other variation on carol that we might think to find, perhaps the name carol with an E as well. I'll show you some examples of that in a moment. And I actually want to match all of the words. So it's going to search for Christmas and carol. And I'm just going to make that search now. And there you can see there are 62 records, which is much fewer than we had before. And there we are, we've got Christmas carols. So it's found the carols, it's got carolers and can't see any quick examples of the name carol with an E, but we've got plurals, carols. Oh, and Caroline. So that's really quite a powerful search. And I'm going to go back to show you what happens 
if I choose a different option to match any of the words. So at this point, I want Christmas or Carol. So I would expect that that would bring back more search results. So I'm going to check that match any of the words box. And it does, it brings 2,732, so lots more. So it's found all the entries for Christmas, <clears throat> as well as all the entries for Carol, Carol with an E, Carols, Carolers, Caroline, Caroling, any variations. So you can browse through those and see if that answers your search query. I'm gonna go back again and I'm gonna make sure I'm actually going to take the wildcard off now. Oh, but I'm going to make sure that those words appear together as a phrase. So I think what I'm looking for probably is any reference to things like Dickens's A Christmas Carol. And so that so the words need to be sit, standing, sitting, being next to each other in the um, in the catalogue record. And actually, yeah, look, there are only fourteen of them. And it is references to a Christmas carol, either a Christmas carol, like a Christmas carol concert, or to performances of a Christmas carol. Or, oh, yeah, no, those are more performances. And Christmas carol as a, as a phrase. Okay, so now I'm just gonna show you the other search options. So that's quite a powerful search, even at a simple basic level. So you can play around with phrases, with words. Um, you can, even at, at the simple level, you can perform some reasonably sophisticated searches. Okay, if you know the reference number of the um, collection that you want to search within, you can use this search within functionality. Um, and if you start typing in the reference number field, it anticipates you. So you could perhaps type for some, look for some parish registers if you type P, parish records, sorry, if you type P, um, or you might know that you're after a D collection. And if you start typing the numbers, then it brings up the D collections or a district of authority um, records or some hospital records, um, health authority records. So, you know, if you know where you want to be, you can make use of this search. So I'm going to search for D10426 um, and the Gloucester Cattle Society, and I'm going to search for Holly. And that brings back seven results you can see it laid out as usual with the breadcrumb trail the navigation tools your search term um, the result display options and then your results but if you look on your left hand side in this little filter sort of option box you can apply some of the filters that are usually available but it's pre-applied this Gloucester Cattle Society reference filter um, which you can actually clear if you decide you want to find out a bit more about Holly in the collection, you can clear that. And then it shows you that the first few hits are the Cattle Society, but after that it's got um, other family and estate records or um, district council records, court session records, and so you can you know, browse through and find other instances of the word Holly. And then your filter options are available on the left hand side as before. So finally, I'm just going to go through this advanced search functionality, which is a really flexible way of making some quite sophisticated search strings so you can pinpoint exactly what it is you're after. So I'm going to search for mistletoe. And I'm going to search actually across all of the fields in the catalog. Um, but then I'm going to add another search and I'm going to search for wine. But this time I only want um, occurrences of wine within the description field. But actually I don't want 
mistletoe and wine. I'm going to toggle that so that it shows me results that match in any of the above fields. So I'm looking for mistletoe or wine. And if I search for that, it brings back 414 hits. And you can see mistletoe at the top, um, wine merchant next, quite a lot of wine merchants, I think, um, buying wine, messuage in wine street. And there we are, you can just browse through the rest of those um, results. You can check what's in local studies. You can filter by date or any of the filter options there. Um, and I'm just going to make one more advanced search where I'm going to search for mistletoe again in all fields. And I'm going to search for wine again in the description field. And I'm going to toggle that so that it's all. But I also know that I want to look for Smith in the description field. And I'm going to look for all of these words. So if we make that search, you can see that's narrowed it down again. So there are only 46 ret hit, uh, hits returned now. You can see all of the usual things at the top. It's explained exactly how it's compiled the search. So it's looking for mistletoe or in the description, wine and Smith. And then you can see that some of the, um, some of them will be the same and some of them are different from the last, the last research. So here we've got Smith wine and spirit merchant, and so on. So we'll just go back to where we started. I'm going to briefly make another search. I'm going to look for Carol with an asterisk. I've got loads of records here. Carol, Mrs. Carol Moore, um, Carol, Caroline. And I'm just going to show you that you can add any or you can save any of the records in your hit list at this point by clicking on the little star. And I mentioned that earlier. So if you add or remove this record, you'll see that my saved records have gone up to three there. So I'm just going to click on the saved records to show you what it is that you can do with those once you've got them. So there's this little box here that's the key thing really. So you've got all the usual things across the top, you've got your search term, and then you've just got the items or the records that you added to your saved records list. So there are a number of things you can do with them at this point. So you can contact us about these items and we did that before. Um, all it does is it adds all three of the items on the list to your email. You can remove all the records from your saved records list because you've decided now you don't need them. You can print them or you can email yourself the catalog entries, which we've done before. But the key new thing that you could do is that it tells you you've got two in this list, I've got two orderable items saved. And if I want to, I can book a visit to see some or all of them. So I'm going to click on that book a visit. And you can see here at the bottom, the items that I wanted to look at. Now, only two of the three items in my list were orderable and it should say on each record. And the reason that these are orderable and the other one wasn't is that these are item records and the other record, can I just go back? Okay. The other record in the list was a collection level record. And generally you can't order a whole collection at a time because it's just not possible to understand or to know how many um, 
how much material that might be. And it's much more helpful if you can drill, much more helpful to you and to us, if you can drill down to find more precise details of, of the thing that you want to look at. So um, that is why you might want to save the collection level record because you know you're interested in exploring more about the collection, but from this page, you can't book a visit to see the whole collection. You'll need to drill down to get to the item level record. So two of these things are item level records, this Christmas fund account and the church book, and they're both orderable. So you could look at them in the search room and I'm going to book a visit to see them. Here you can read our research room guidance about um, pencils, leaving out bags, using supports, um, camera passes, so on and so forth. You can see what our COVID arrangements are. So you need to book in advance. Please don't visit us if you've got any COVID-19 symptoms. Um, it's helpful if you can register for an IRA card before your visit. Uh, please wear a face mask when you're moving around, um, so on. And then we ask you to tick to accept those um, terms and conditions. Then you can fill in this form, which is just the usual contact details so that we can get in touch with you about your order. Oh, can't spell. And then, oh, sorry, we ask you to choose a date, a first choice date, um, and it'll tell you when we've got slots available. So I'm going to come in a couple of weeks' time. We also ask you to suggest a second choice date if for any reason um, we can't accommodate you on the first choice. So I'm going to put a date even further forward. And then you can write any additional information here in this free text box. Now we do ask that people only order 10 items at a time. Um, so it's really helpful if you can prioritize the items you want to see. Um, and then I'm just, I just click send. What have I filled in? I need to tick this box, sorry. There we go, and then I just click send. And you get this message to say your request has been sent and we'll get back to you within a few working days to confirm your visit. And then you can go back to the homepage. So I think that is really all I can say about the online catalogue. Um, please just drop us a line if you've got any comments to make at all or if you need any help. And thank you very much for watching. Brilliant, there we go. Um, we've had a few questions in the chat, so I'll just go through those in case anybody missed them. If you've got anything else, please just pop them into the chat and I can answer them straight away. I just, somebody asked, what was the difference between search and browse? Well, we've been through search quite um, specifically just now, but if you have a look at browse, you can just click on any of the sort of sets of records that we hold here. Um, you might particularly want to know what sort of hospital records we've got and you can access them in that way. So without having to make a search for a specific search term like Christmas or Holly or whatever it was we did before, you can just oh, have a browse through. And there we are. You know you particularly want to have a look at Cheltenham District Area Health Authority and you can just go in that way and see what kind of records there are there. Oh, it's being a bit slow. I'm glad we didn't do this live. There we go. And then you get to the collection description about the District Area Health Authority records. Um, we had another query. What was the other query? What's the difference between um, item and piece? Let me just see if I can find. Am I going to be able to find a piece if I search for Christmas again? And I'm going to um, filter here by piece. 
So you can see generally we think of a, a piece as a as a, a producible unit. So when you want to see something in the research room, you order up a piece, uh, which might be a volume. It might be something like, uh, sorry, item. It might be an item. You order up the item, which might be a volume or it might be a bundle of deeds or it might be a folder of correspondence. And then a piece is something that's within that item. So it might be a page of a book, or it might be a single deed within a bundle, or it might be a single letter within a folder of correspondence. And you can see I searched for Christmas and I filtered it on piece here. Let's just see if I can find a good example. Lots of, lots of citizen things. I'm going to go somewhere in the middle and see, here we go. This quarter sessions piece, there's an information and examination, 1741. And these have been, um, what's the word? It itemized, itemized within the item, itemized within the, um, the role separately. So if you ask because you want to see this examination of Catherine Whitaker, um, what we'll bring up is a, is a I think it's a, a, a role or a bundle of information and examinations, and then you'll have to fish through it and find this particular piece that you're interested in. Oh, no, it's the volume. Sorry, there we are. I see it's a document bound into a volume. My screen is frozen. It's there we are. Sorry, it's a document bound into a volume. So you'll have to go through the volume and find that particular entry that you're after. Um, is asterisk the only wild card available? Um, I think there might be another wild card. I've forgotten what it is off the top of my head. That's not good, is it? Um, let me just see if the help is, does it say in the help? Just use asterisks. I think some other Apexia users may have a different wildcard search. I can find out and confirm, but definitely asterisk works. Um, perhaps Clifford or Clifford. I think you just will have to use the one asterisk. Let me try that. It should bring up Clifford and Clifford. And I think you may be able to use two asterisks within the same search. Let me see what happens if we do that. I can't find any, I can't see any Cliffords with a Y. Go a bit further through. Nope. No, no Cliffords with a Y. I think stick to the asterisk. I'm just going to try and see again what happens if you if you use two. No, that was what. Not enough to tell, or too many to tell. Let me see if I can narrow that down a little bit. Oh, not enough to be conclusive. That's annoying. I think, yes, just stick to the asterisk, and that is an effective wildcard, and you should be able to scroll through and find some variance within that. Usually um, a question mark works though, doesn't it, for a single character in the middle? Should we try? Oh, that's the standard search term, but but it may not in this case. Let's try um, Carol. Yes, it did there. You're right. Carol with an E. Carol's with an S. Caroli there. Yes. Yeah, so yes, I think you're right. So that must that's true then. A, a, a question mark does work. Thank you. 
It's always good to find out something new. Can you search for book titles rather than topics? You can in the free text search. Um, if you know a book title, can we think of any, can we think of any book titles? Um, because you can choose to search over local studies records and that should bring up. Oh, that's a good idea. Books behind us. Withington, a Cotswold village history. Let me see. Withington, a Cotswold village history. Um, I should have done that as a phrase. That didn't work. Let me see. No, that should work. I don't know why that doesn't work. We might have to be a bit more inventive. It might be that if it's a book on a shelf, it might not be in our catalogue. I thought it should have been. Let me go to local studies. I want to find Gloucestershire archives things. too many pages sing out if you see it i haven't spotted it yet i can't see that so yes i'm i'm afraid i rather haven't proved the point but i think the point is that we should be able to search for a title um and it should bring it up. And that one hasn't worked. Let me try. Let me try one of these Red Book of Worcester. Red Book of Worcester. And we want that as a phrase. No items found. If you said Charming and Bodak. Let's That's try another one behind us. Road acts. Oh, can't spell. There's a phrase. No. Um, maybe it's in local studies. Oh, it's in local studies. Sorry, I missed my own lesson <laughs> and didn't look in all of the tabs. Cheltenham Road acts. There it is. So you can search for book titles. Yes. Thank goodness. Ah, what else? I can't see that there are any more questions in the chat. Has anybody got anything else that we would like uh, to So is, is this, this is all live now, is it? We can, live, I can go online now. And we're search. live now. Right, okay. Yes, and you can go online and search and it should all be there. Yeah, it looks a great improvement from Good. what I've seen. <laughs> Good. Well, that's really encouraging to hear. I mean, I, as I said, we were, you know, acutely conscious that um, our previous catalogue really wasn't fit for purpose. So, you know, so we're really hoping that people will find this much more, much better to use. Oh, sorry, we've got another question on this screen. Paul or records. Um, Paul or records. Um, I probably would go straight into the collections and the Board of Guardians records, um, which I think, are they under here? I thought they were under Boards of Guardians. Oh no, they're not. Hopeless. Um, I happen to know that it's a G slash reference. So if you know which, um, area you want you can use that i think if you just search for board of guardians it should also come up or 
perhaps boards of guard, board of guardians. Um, and then you can perhaps use the filters on the left hand side here. So you can either look at collections and see all of the poor law unions and other 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 associated records that might be relevant for you. Um, and as you see, most of the poor law union records have a G slash and that's that's geographic. So if you know which area you're after, you can sort of drill down with that. Um, we've got one internally, but we haven't published it, but we easily could do. Um, if that would be useful, we could put that on the um, on the website very easily. So, um, so yes, let me make a note and we can do that. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. That's a very helpful suggestion. So uh, m moving to this new system, have you actually transitioned all of the records from your older system onto it and, and added a load more perhaps, or, or have you still got many more to do? Most, most, most things have been uh, moved in, imported into the new system. Okay. There are just some funny anomalies that we haven't um, quite tidied up. And it's mostly actually to do with an additional set of um, indexes and pieces and it's to do it's, it's sort of a technical thing to do with how the old system treated them and how the new system treated them um so i would i think all items are in there but it's whether there are some index type they're, they're called we call them snippets it's i don't know if that's very helpful but i can't i can't quite think of an example off the top of my head that it, that isn't in there but it's it's very often that more detailed um sort of transcription or piece level description um, that may not have come across yet, but that's something we're working on. So we're hoping that that should all be in there quite soon. Right. And and does this new database give you scope for increasing the amount of information that's that's available online, you know, for a particular record? Or are you happy with what you've got? Yes, no, there's some really great features with this new system that we're looking forward to, um, you know, exploring really that uh, all sorts of um, developments that the um, supplier has planned. So that's things like um, external, you know, customers, users of the records being able to, um, you know, enhance the descriptions from your own knowledge and your experience of using the records and being able to do that just by sort of tagging or typing in or, you know, adding some additional information. So that's something that we're really keen to explore because obviously, you know, you as users of the records are really well placed to add all sorts of additional information that isn't already captured. So that's one thing that we're, you know, particularly keen on doing. Um, there are all sorts of other um, facilities that this new system will allow us to make use of. So we've got some fabulous volunteers who do all sorts of um, listing and indexing work for us. Um, this system means that they can now do that directly into the system. We previously um, well, and still do to some extent. We haven't, you know, haven't finished that work yet. But you know, people have been listing things in um, Excel spreadsheets, for example, which then, um, you know, need to be imported, and we have to do an additional step. The idea is that actually people could just log straight into this and list directly into it, and that will, you know, then that's just almost immediately available. So that would be much um, faster way of getting that additional enhancement into the public domain. So those are two things that we're, you know, working on quite soon, I think, which will be, which will be really good. And there was no capacity to do that at all in the other, in the other system. Thank you. Oh, there's another question. Um, that's a good question. I don't think it does. I can't remember whether discovery, I think discovery linked to us as a archival institution. I can't remember whether they linked directly into our catalogue. I will follow that up. We've always said they're out of 
um, this is definitely the most up to date version of our holdings so discovery, the data in discovery is. Um, I think probably 10 years or more out of date, but one of the good things about this new system is that the interoperability is very much more. Um, it's very much easier, so we would be looking to update discovery and we are able to do that more easily now, because we can by taking data out of this and uploading it directly into discovery. Um, I'm just going to make a note of that. Right. Where are we? Brilliant. So we run over a little bit, but thank you very much for your time. Um, if you've got any feedback, please let us know. You can email us at archives at gloucestershire.gov.uk and we'd be really interested to hear. Um, we're going, as I say, we're working on putting together this frequently asked questions sheet, so you know we'll be able to publish that and we'll definitely include the um, classification schemes which um, somebody suggested here. So thank you very much. Um, keep us posted and um, look forward to seeing you soon. Cheerio thank then. You. Bye, bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.